Hello everybody and welcome to another video in my favourite five series where I choose five of my favourite colours and then show you why I like them and then a little sketch at the end to show how I would use them. My name is Debbie and I'm a mixed media artist. If you're new here, you are very welcome. If you are one of my regulars, welcome back. I really, really appreciate your support. Um, it's... Uh, really hard to find five of your favorite and I mean like it's sort of if you were packing to go somewhere which are the five colors that you just could not leave at home and I love Caran d'Ache I love their color palette it's beautiful it's extensive and I have all of them because full set syndrome but five standout favorites actually I didn't get five standout favorites I got five standout favorites plus an honorable mention just like last time so that might be a thing favorite five mm, favorite six doesn't sound quite as good so let's go with just favorite five plus an honorable mention so my choices of absolute standout favorites for the sort of mixed media work that I do are the following and the first one is green ochre I literally could not continue my life without this coloured pencil. <laughs> it's not too much to say, I don't think. And artists, you will understand that. This is just perfect. And for the sort of work I do, this is a really, really lovely highlight colour on trees. And today's little sketch is with a gouache base. I've prepared, I've pre-prepared it here and we go, because I want to concentrate on the coloured pencils. So I've laid down some gouache washers. I don't use gouache like other artists do. In fact, there's a few people who use it like I do. So I'm certainly not unique. However, I like to use gouache as a wash, almost like a watercolour, actually. And the reason I don't use watercolour but use gouache instead is because I then go on to cover it up a lot. And I kind of don't want to do that to my watercolours. So I'm still working through that sort of little mental blip. So what I'm doing today is I'm going to focus, like I said, I've prepared my picture because I want to focus on the coloured pencils and how they would possibly add to this um, gouache sketch. So green ochre number 025 is my standout favourite highlight green. I just love it and yeah I've got a few. This is actually quite a new one but I've got a few others as well because every time I put in an order I buy another one in case I run out. So let's watch while we're going along shall we? And this one it's just it's a warm green but it's a fabulous warm green. Love it. Perfect. If you're into the bluey greens, and some people are exclusively into bluey greens, others are exclusively into a yellow green, and this is a yellow green, um, then this is probably not going to float your boat at all. But I'm sure Karen Dash can rise to the occasion with the colour that you do like. But I just, I love that yellowy green. Also, following on from greens, is dark fellow cyanine green which is 719 and this would have to be my favorite dark green in the Caran d'Ache colors again just a beautiful muted green with a fabulous pigment payoff and re yeah it does everything right ticks all the boxes and even though it's a cooler green than this one they work really well together so those two are my two favourite greens. Moving on to greys. Greys, I need greys in my life and I like a warm grey rather than a, um, a cool grey. Now, the first one isn't grey at all. It's called Raw Umber 50%, number 846. But my brain reads that as a warm grey, probably a beige. Let's see what you think. We don't want that bloody dress from Facebook all over again where half the people thought it was gold and white and so forth. I read that as a grey and I use it as a grey. So even though it's raw umber, it's not the full strength. It's 50%. And if I can just... Oh, gosh, I got it in one. And if you saw how many pencils I've got here, honestly, that's the full strength raw umber. This is the half strength raw umber. And just a little comparison here. See, that's a really nice colour too, but we're not having that one because it's meant to be five plus one, not every pencil I own. Um, it's only half strength, but it looks 
like a grey and it works like a grey. So I love that because the greys are not amazing otherwise. My apology to French grey, which is number 808. This is a really nice grey. And again, it is in that warm sort of colourway. I like that. They also work quite well together. As you've probably realised by now, I'm quite a muted palette person. I love warm earth tones. I love autumn tones, that sort of thing. Um, spring greens, I've got a bit of a love-hate relationship with them. Although this one, I just use this one and be done with it. My final favourite five is dark indigo. And you can use this instead of black. It's really dark. In fact, it's so dark. Let me see if I can do that lottery again where I grab for something and actually get it. Oh, don't think so this time. No, no, we're not going to have the same amount. Let me just grab some colours here. Black. Just for comparison, the Caran Sorry about all the rattling in the background there. The Caran Black, it's a little bit more dead as black can be be sometimes but it's not too far off the dark indigo and I love dark indigo the way some people love Payne's grey I mean I love Payne's grey too please don't get me wrong there love Payne's grey but indigo if you can get a nice indigo you can use that anywhere a dark color is required like any sort of shadow anything like that you can use a dark indigo so this Caran Dash dark indigo is one for the kit if I don't think I said the number it's 639 and having the numbers is really good for cross-referencing, especially if you're buying from a foreign website. I live in Germany and some of the times, sometimes my computer will translate things without me asking to because I don't need it to, to translate it, but it'll decide it, I do. But it'll do it wrong and you get some really hilarious names substituted. So having the number is really useful. My honourable mention is a warm, war, not worm earth, warm earth 5%. And this one is another nice warm colour, as you would expect. Really, really nice. It's good for so many things. It's, yeah, it's another one I can't leave at home. So what would I do with these? Well, like I said, I'm a mixed media artist, so I would pair those with fine liners, which of course you can't see. Let me bring them into the screen for you. That would be more helpful. I've got here a Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen Food Nib Hard, which I use constantly. I have a Uni Pin Fine Line in 0.1, which is a brown one, which I also use constantly. Ditto for this Pentel Brush Sign Pen which is around, well, it's a food nib, so it's variable, so it's not going to give you the size, but it's another really good one. This is my beloved Pigma Micron 005, which is great for very fine details. So I would use those in something like this. So we would start off with the greens. And this green ochre I would use on the top, just working reasonably loosely, but not as loosely as a lot of people, myself, I've tried loose, I don't do loose, I don't do loose, I don't do timed and I don't do limited colour palettes. This has caused me actual pain having to choose. But I would highlight with this colour, let's get a little bit down there, a little bit up the back here, I wouldn't do much for the sky at all actually in this setting and, oh wait a minute, it's a little bit more here. And over the top of the gouache, it just, it's beautiful. It goes beautifully well. And then I'd fill in some of the gaps with this and maybe deepen some of those green parts. Give that a bit of interest. You might even come in here. We might decide to sharpen it. That's another thing we could do with a pencil is sharpen it so that it works if you've got something excuse me, quite sharp you can then put some interest in with that in the way of branches here maybe and you can come back over the top with the other one and burnish the edges of that 
to make it a little bit more subtle. Here again, this bit's slightly behind the other so we can deepen that a bit. Pick out the side of the cottage. there as well. And obviously if I painted people or animals and I do animals and birds but I never ever sketch people they're just not my scene I'll put people in things but I would never do a port I can't imagine a time in my life where I, when I'll sit down and do a portrait if I did I might choose a totally different set of tools because these just wouldn't go. Um, to show you the dark indigo now, if you wanted to further deepen the green and really make a point of it, you would do that, or you could do that with the dark indigo. So dark indigo will darken your greens up and stand in as a substitute for black. Or be dark indigo. If dark indigo was what you set out to have, it'll be dark indigo. So, you know, it's really good. I might want to deepen the furrows. Let's say this is a ploughed field. This doesn't exist at all, only in my imagination. I might want to create some plough furrows here. I'd say it's in Suffolk somewhere. We lived in Norfolk for ages, so I'd say this is Suffolk, except there's a bit of a hill, and that's a bit more unusual for Suffolk, so perhaps not. So you might do that and then you come over, come back with the French grey and go over the top of that and burnish it a little bit. Very quick, nice if you're wanting to do an en plein air sketch. I can see the point of having the limited palette. It makes me think about the colours differently. I just don't like it. I prefer to paint exactly what I see in front of me. So if I'm looking at a building and it is red, I don't want to paint it green. I want to paint it red. And yeah, so it's quite, it's really quite important. Okay, so I might come back in then with my honourable mention, which is the Warm Earth 5% and just pop a little bit of highlight on the top of those furrows. I could also go over the dark bit because what will happen there is I will end up burnishing the colour and changing it again and creating a third colour out of all of those. Okay, just like that. And we could so get in there with the umber. Mixed media is quite often made up of huge amounts of layers of things. So we can blend that up a little bit and make sure that that's what we're aiming for. So at the moment, it looks a little bit stripy. But it's fairly easy by keeping on going backwards and forwards until you're happier. But because there is blue in brown, the dark indigo makes it a little bit darker without being too obvious. Okay. We can also put some foreground things in here. Just one or two very subtle sort of plants, maybe some blackberry. Use the green as well. And here again, because it's in the foreground, we could come in and fill in with the green ochre. It just sort of balances these two areas of foliage out. And of course, again, Let's, let's say it's blackberry on the corner of a field or the edge of a field and these are, it's just a tangle of brambles and all sorts. So there's that. 
Now that leaves us with the house. Let's assume that the light is coming in from this side. So I'm going in with my French grey on this end bit. To make that a little bit darker. It's a stone cottage. That bit darker. Maybe warm it up with a little bit of warm earth because we're assuming that this stone is local so it's come out of the earth so it can be exactly the same colour. And the windows can be put in with indigo as can the door. And a little bit of under the eaves darkness here which we can then blend down with that same on this side of the chimney that's the shadow side of the chimney oh, wondering where I thought I had another one burnish that off now this lighter grey be better on the lighter side of the building. Just like so. And so on the lighter side, I might use the French grey under the eaves rather than the dark indigo. Use it on both so that it blends in together and then the dark indigo for the windows. As you can see, the windows are more indicated than anything else. You don't have to, they don't have to be perfect. It's not like a builder's gonna come and look at them and give you a, a certificate of safety. I don't even think I'm gonna use the fine liners for this actually. The pencils are so good, we can get away with just that. And the roof is going to be using French gray just to get some colors in. Like so. And then maybe back with warm earth. Might have some little chimney stacks as well as a lot of these old cottages do. Like so. Okay, so that is how I would use this particular selection to just make a very, very quick landscape sketch of a little cottage. And I really like that. I like, I do like having the limit, the limitations sometimes. Other times I really hate it. Like I said, if a house is red, I'm going to paint it red. So I need to have a red pencil. I don't want to represent it as some other colour. Um, so yeah, I'm, I tend to try and do, do that. But sometimes if I'm just doing a quick sketch, See, I know that people do these quick sketches and and timed sketches and things like that and limited colours as warm-up exercises. There are all sorts of warm-up exercises in art. I hate all of them. <laughs> so, there's just no pleasing some people. <laughs> what I do as a warm-up sketch is I'll paint an imaginary picture like this, for example. See, I could add a little bit of smoke coming out because this smoke is quite close to whatever colour gouache I've used. Yeah, so I hope you enjoyed that and you got something from it. And if you like my sort of sketching and you want to learn more about mixed media art, do consider joining my Patreon. Um, all the links are below in the description box. And if you just want to support an artist with a one-off deal, I also have um, art zines for sale in my Patreon shop of all my sketches, well, not all of them yet, but I'm the collection is growing, can I put it that way? And um, that's a great way to support me with a one-off purchase and um, yeah, I share my sketchbooks that way. They're digital downloads so you don't even have to wait for the postman and you can shop in the Patreon shop without being a Patreon, which is quite a nice thing to be able to do you don't have to commit to a monthly subscription but if you would like to learn art and you are happy to commit to a monthly subscription I think the first tier is about six euros fifty so I don't know what that is in the current exchange rates but it's around the ten dollar a month mark which and you get a hell of a lot for that there is so much on my patreon so for that you get access to the whole lot of what's there in your tier and so forth and yeah have a look and see what you think. I would absolutely love to see you there. 
anyway till next time i may have another sketchbook tour next week i don't know i'm very very close to finishing another one it's quite a big one so i might even do that in two halves but i do hope you've enjoyed this favorite five session and i'm quite proud of the fact that i haven't used any of my fine liners because normally i would um yeah just gouache and colored pencil five color pencils plus the honorable mention um Enjoy, I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you loved it. More coming next week. Have a great one. Bye. Bye.